Check it. W-N-S-T. Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I like the new studio. The new I have more light in the new studio. I don't know why. Uh, all of our wise conversations uh, are back in action here as we get ready for AFC, NFC championship game. But I have no idea how it's going to top what we had this weekend. Four incredible football games, and uh, the, the last one being even more incredible. But um, Dennis, I, I spent the weekend moving. You know this. And um, Fatal Flaw. The cable TV was not completely where it needed to be, and we wound up utilizing Wi-Fi and streaming to watch the games this weekend. No bueno. Do, do not stream playoff football. It's bad news. Look, I, I don't like streaming games anyway. Call me old school. Now I, I'm casting uh, shows on my TV screen from my cell phone, so a lot of things are changing when it comes to technology. But one thing needs to change for sure, Nestor, and that's the NFL overtime rules. I think they stink. I think it's horrible that the Buffalo Bills were denied a chance to, to equal, to match the Chiefs' opening touchdown in overtime. I think it's horrible. You know, it's amazing. That's the first thing you came up. I came up with great weekend, great everything, and you're like, the overtime rules suck. And, and, and I'll hear that, and maybe that's where you are in your five minutes on the Internet, you know, right now, because that's where – but there's going to be a whole edge on all of this because the game was so great. To your point, it didn't have a true ending. It didn't have the kind of ending fans would want. And look, it's instant classic. And with all due respect to my dear friend, John Stebbin and the greatest game ever played and the mile high miracle. I was at the drive Elway game. There are a lot of great football games, a lot of great football games. You talk about that Philadelphia, New England game a couple of years ago, Super Bowl games or whatever. So in the aftermath of this, I would say it's a great weekend. I think we can all drink that in. But some will begin the conversation that the Sunday night game was the greatest game ever played. And to your point, it's going to be a game that's probably going to change rules. Yeah, I, and it should. The funny thing is the Chiefs were actually the ones a few years ago who were really lobbying for the uh, uh, the overtime change. They wanted the, both teams to have a fair and equal and equitable chance to win. We didn't see that happen. And as a fan, Nestor, it, 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 it made me want more. I, I, you know, the outcome wasn't the outcome. I didn't think it was a fair outcome because I didn't think that the Chiefs were either cap were also capable of stopping the Buffalo Bills. Uh, you had the Bills called heads. I don't. I think we would have had a different team representing uh, in, in the you know that division in the in a uh, conference championship game this weekend. Would have been a lot of drunk people uh, breaking tables in Buffalo on cold days too. Would have been uh, fun to watch. Yeah. Dennis is here. He's from Coons Ford, of course. Uh, Coons Baltimore Ford, and, and he'll be here on Thursday from three until five, as always, talking championship football. Dennis, I I skipped the lead. I, I, I we we were talking about the teams that are still playing and maybe the teams that aren't playing. Six o'clock uh, on a Friday night on my moving day, no less. I got boxes up the year and messes and dumpsters. Thank you, Bill Cole, Cole Roofing. Um, and the Coons Ford text service goes off, WNST and Wink Martindale out. You and I have, have spoken at this, around this. You sometimes go to games, sometimes don't. You've had skyboxes, now you don't. I had PSLs, I had 10 tickets, then I had four, then I had two, now I have none. And the way they're conducting business at this point, Friday, 6 p.m. news dumps, that's the stuff you do when you do illegal stuff, illicit stuff, stuff you don't want anybody to know about, but blah, 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 make it go away on the weekend. It's not good business for them to be doing six o'clock news dumps. And we can sit here all day and talk about Wink Martindale and where all that is and what's going to happen. But we, when you have a six o'clock news dump, you do it because you're ashamed of it or you're trying to hide it. And there's been more of that. John Harbaugh's running the PR department over there. It's pretty clear because I, I don't like the smell of any of this after six losses. And we'll get into it with the Ravens and these other teams that are playing this weekend and great football. But from our purposes here for Wink Martindale and what it is, I, I don't like the way it smells. It, 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 it smells a little drastic to me after so many injuries this year. Well, if reading between the lines, it looks like this thing has been building for quite a while now. And I'm not sure if there's ever a really good time to let somebody go to your point. Friday uh, night news dump, it, it kind of gets lost in the sauce, especially with all the great uh, games uh, happening in the uh, in the NFL. But uh, it wasn't a big surprise. I mean, Wink's been a little bit outspoken. He made some comments uh, about Joey Burrows. He made comments against the Bengals last year. He's a little bit out there. And 
But they knew that going in, right? I mean, he's a Rex Ryan. He's a he's a Ryan disciple. He's a Raider. The act starts to wear thin, and and when you, uh, it sounded very much like it was mutual, and and it was probably welcome on both sides. And I, I said last week on my show that I expected at least one of the two coordinators to move on. I thought it would be Greg Roman. It still also may be Greg Roman. I'm not excluding Greg's departure from Baltimore either. And with the plethora of great defensive co coordinators available all of a sudden, uh, you know what? It, it might be time, for, a great time for the Ravens to hit the reset button, to have some new ideas, to to maybe have a, a freshening, if you will. So, I, you know what? I'm, I was okay with the move, to be frank with you. Well, when you lose six games in a row... Things happen. Things move. And you mentioned Roman. And I'll go back to Brian Billick, our partner here on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation. Brian will always say, look, I'm not letting the Detroit Lions come in here and take all my coaches out the back door and whatever. But then there comes a point where you're like, all right, I've had enough. I got somebody under contract. Let's have a man to man conversation with them that this is going to be their last year here. And there's eight or nine jobs out there. Peyton might be leaving. There might even be more right after the weekend. Um, Andy Reid might step that. You know what I mean? Bianami might be the next Chiefs coach of Andy Reid. I, I don't know, but things are moving now. And, and that changes coordinators, position coaches down the line where if Anthony Weaver gets passed over here, I don't know. I mean, they always do it from within, right? He was a coordinator. They brought him in. He's a legacy guy. He's a Notre Dame guy. If you like him, great. But this is where every um, uh, uh, Flores is going to get a job, right? Dan Quinn's going to get a job. These guys are going to get a job. I don't know where it's going to be. And then they're going to be calling Wink or they're going to be calling, hey, I work with Greg Roman out in San Francisco. And, you know, maybe John doesn't want him. And maybe I should put a call in. Or maybe. Hey, we're a long way from this sorting out. And I guess my, I naively believe that. You'd look at this and say, we had all these injuries. Let's go back, put the band back together. Kumbaya, let's get Peters back. Let's sign some new players and go do this. That's never been John's way. John, John hasn't been about stability with coordinators. I mean, at all. And But he's also, he doesn't he has no tree either, right? So so has he been good at hiring coordinators? He won a lot of football games, right? Has he been great at managing the staff? I don't know. The Cam Cameron thing was um, dancing on the edge of chaos, as Luke Jones brought up earlier. So this is the right time to be making changes. And I'm with you. If you don't feel like you have a happy marriage, move on. Move on. I, and that's cool. I, I just think 6 o'clock on Friday night, if the organization sort of ducking into it a little bit, instead of having a press conference, being front-facing, they're not a front-facing organization anymore. They, 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 they run and hide. The Baltimore Ravens run and hide. That is who they are at this point. They don't want to get out in front of things and have press conferences and have the owner show up. It's, it, that's changed. And that's John, and that's the way John prefers to run this thing. But this is going to get, to your point, even a little stickier, because there are a lot of questions about what they're doing now, right? Or whether John has identified who he wants, whether Wink has identified... I'm going to go take that job with that guy because a lot of these jobs are happening right now. There's a lot more than what you're seeing in the media or what you're seeing hit the street as far as jobs. Well, John has an obligation to, to uh, hire the best def defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. So with all that talent being out there, especially if this uh, thing with, with the wink was coming apart, uh, he wanted uh, maybe perhaps want to get out there quickly as possible to advertise that the job is in fact available. But also this is one way that a head coach can keep himself relevant and fresh. Bill Belichick has had a plethora of coordinators on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's been able to turn them over. Sometimes they've got head coaching jobs. Sometimes he's fired them, right? This is how we got Dean Pease for, for a long, long time. So that's how you become, you, as a head coach, uh, Nestor, uh, you, you have to move the apples around. Even perfect apples get bruised if you don't move them. And I think that's, this was just a case of just a good time for those guys to to part company and also for John to be able to bring in maybe somebody else who has a different philosophy. One, that, that meshes closer to what he wants to do versus, versus what Wink was doing. We've also seen some players develop and get some sack totals uh, at other teams once they left the Baltimore Ravens. So, it, you know, did that factor in player development, whether we're talking about Zadaria Smith or Yannick Ngakwe or, or even Matt Judon? Well, all those guys developed and they got paid. <laughs> so, wasn't it? I, I, for, for me, those guys weren't a development issue. Those guys were, do you want to pay $60 million to your, to your edge rusher? And then, in Matt Judon's case, not even have him on the field in January. Right? And that, I had Greg Bedard on last week from Boston Sports Journal, a longtime Sports Illustrated writer. He's up in Boston. And the Judon thing is still a, a little bit of a head scratch on the back end of COVID and popularity with the coach and getting on the field and whether he could do it or not. And, um, 
Yeah, I, I love your apples uh, bruised reference. Yeah, that you got, you got I don't hear that one fresh. often. You got to keep this, things, things fresh. You really do. And sometimes you, you know what? And that's how Coach also stays relevant. That's how his message doesn't get stale, because it's the coordinators that really determine to a great degree the success of the team on both sides of the ball, right? Great coordinators make for for great championship teams, and that's what the Ravens are trying to develop here on both sides of the ball. So for you at the defense, and we'll get back. I want to get back to these games and get back to the Bills and Chiefs and all. The, Joe Burrow, we haven't mentioned his name yet. Aaron Rodgers, oh, he's eliminated. We don't have to mention him anymore. But it was an incredible weekend of football. But the scene was set by the Ravens saying, we're making a change on defense. Philosophically, Wink was a gambler, right? And he comes from that whole, that, that edge. And you knew that. And Rob Ryan's going to be in the building now. And here we are. What do you think, Anthony Weaver, and what do you think of dialing it back from a – well, I think it's different when you have Peters and you have, and you have uh, 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 Humphrey on the back end too. You, you play defense differently. You scheme differently when you have that. You, you can gamble more, and that was more in the wing style. I, I don't know philosophically. I like the way they played defense the last couple of years. Um, I didn't like that the ball went over their heads. Big plays were a problem this year. I saw that more as a factor of players. I mean, come on, man. The last month of the season, Wink's out there playing with guys off the street. I think the scapegoat him, when you haven't won a playoff game in a couple of years, and your star quarterback's clock's ticking, they're, they're, this feels a little bit like John saving John to some degree. And I don't, John always feels it. John's got $100 million in the bank and still acts like being out of a, a job next week would be against his religion, right? Like, so he still operates with that ham and egg feeling about him. But I do think there's something about taking chances and all of that, that he does at the two yard line. And Hey, we're going to go in. We're going to, I thought to myself, if Tom Brady would have gone for two, right? They did. They would have won, right? Cause that's what John would do at the end. Hey, we got him on the ropes. Let's go for two. We're either going to win or lose here. And that felt very John gambly. And that feels like wink to me. It feels like that 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 would have been a good mesh for them, not a bad mesh. And that's why I find this to be a little curious. I thought Wink was going to be here a little while. Well, with Wink, in, in, in Wink's case, Nestor, when, when a team can't pressure the quarterback with just rushing four, you have to gamble. You have to take chances. You have to blitz. In all fairness, not many teams can put pressure on a quarterback with just rushing four. We're not talking about the 2000 Baltimore Ravens here, right? So Wink, I think, just took what he had and tried to make a chicken salad out of it. He didn't have the proper ingredients. But still, I, I do think it was a philosophical uh, mismatch between he and John. Maybe John wants to see a more of a bend, don't break defense. Maybe he wants to play a cover two, maybe more zone than, than man coverage. And, and maybe there were times uh, perhaps that uh, he, he wanted Wink to play that way versus uh, hanging out the corners to dry. And, you know, these things that we don't know, and, and uh, those are internal conversations. But I do think it, it does present itself a chance for the Ravens to, to be able to, to get better uh, fresher and uh, they'll have all those guys back, hopefully with good draft picks. The other thing with John, same thing with, with Brian. They were the beneficiaries of, of uh, Ozzie Newsome and Eric DaCosta picking the, the, the better Jimmys and Joes versus the X and O's. Let's face it, if Lamar Jackson doesn't get selected in the, uh, in the, in the first round, with no likeness, uh, John Harbaugh would have been gone that year. So I, I fully believe that had the Ravens not gone 6-1 and one that year uh, and made the playoffs, I think John was going to be out of the contract. It's fascinating this whole season. Dennis Colossus is here. He is here from Coots Baltimore Ford. He's over in Security Boulevard. He'll be here on Thursday from 3 until 5, driving you home on the Sunday Sports Voice. Uh, and getting ready. It's AFC NFC Championship Sunday. Uh, and we'll be ready for all that. Then I told a story earlier with Luke. I, I had a young man that works in my building. I call him young. He's probably 30 now. I've known him 10 years. He was a kid, you know, city yeah. kid working in the building, uh, became a doorman. We've had the same people in my building for 20 years. He's one of the new guys. His name's Antoine. And he always wore a Patriot hat and he had a little fuzzy ball on the top. And, and this is 10 years ago when we we're playing Tom Brady at this time of year, right? Going back and forth and all that. And um, he's loved Tom Brady's whole life, I guess. And he became a Buccaneers fan two years ago when Brady went, whatever. And as we were leaving, packing our Von Paris moving truck stuff, he said, hey, hey, Jen and Ness, I'm, I'm going to Tampa to see Tom Brady play. So I'm like, because he had been talking about going to New England for years. I don't know that he'd ever been to an NFL game. I know he'd never been to Florida or been to Tampa. I don't know if he'd been on a plane 
or not. I think he probably flown some places, but he was so excited. And we didn't even have his phone number because he lives in our building, right? Or he's in our building. We took his phone number and he got on a plane and flew down to Tampa to see maybe Tom Brady's last game. What a weekend of football, right? I mean, I we we're going to be talking about this all week. And I made the mistake of streaming. You never want to stream. Forget your cable sorted when you move. Trust me. Um, because it was going in and out. It, I missed the end of the Rams game. It, it went away and on my and I saw the score come up and I'm like, how's that possible? Yeah. How's that possible? I mean, bad time. You want to what? see? But it was memorable because we moved in a new place. I got raccoons out the window. My cat's going crazy. <laughs> Tom Brady's going crazy. Mahomes is going crazy. John, yeah. It was a legendary weekend for football. It really, really was. Yeah, I found myself strangely rooting for our Tom Brady uh, toward the end of that game. I didn't want to see. I Tom almost Brady. tweeted it. I almost tweeted. Are you yeah. rooting for him? Because I, I, I sort of, I was because of Jensen a little bit, but oh, like. Man. Look, he's the old warrior, and they were down and out, and uh, thinking, hmm, 27 to 3, we've seen this before, we've seen this movie before, and here they come back, and yeah, I want to see Tom Brady play more football, I hope he doesn't retire, I hope he gives us one more year, because love him or hate him, and even with all the Patriots controversy and, and all the stuff they had going on, Tom is a legend, you know, you can't take away the seven Super Bowl victories, and it would have been fun to watch him uh, go to the conference championship game, but you know what? Uh, he was bloodied. He was. Uh, I, I can't see him going out on the shield like that. I, I do think that uh, he'll take a few days, a few weeks. Uh, his wife's going to certainly factor into his decision, but uh, I'm more interested and intrigued with Tom Brady than I am Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers, uh, uh, I guess today he can go get himself vaccinated if he so chooses. Whatever Brady is doing to win, first off, we know he's a cheater. Right. Like, I mean, I know he's not on the up and up. He, he was in New England too long. I'll take less money, Mr. Kraft. Maybe you want to hire Giselle on a side deal and take care of the family a little bit. So I, I know Tom's not an honest guy. Um, I mean, he's just not. He's, he's, just, he's not. I mean, I don't say he's a scumbag. I'm not going to go that far. But I don't think I think he's a cheater. So that being said, and that's not about the air on the footballs. That's just if you're not cheating, you're, try, you're not trying or whatever. Yeah, until you're the person is cheating. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, until you're until you're the person cheated, and then and then the, the law comes looking for you. You're like, no, I break the law all the time. You can't put me in jail. I'm Tom Brady. Oh, I used to be the president, or whatever your thought is that you're that you can cheat and get away with it, right? Yeah. Brady at 44, 45. I, listen, I'm I'm, the, I'm gonna say this once, and I said it to Luke. I've been on the radio 30 years. I remember what Brady Anderson will still tell you. He never took a steroid. <laughs> to this day, he'll, right. like, he'll still tell you that. Juan Gonzalez will still tell you you never took a step. Meanwhile, Canseco's writing books and saying we were all cheating. They were all cheating. Ripken. No one will ever say Ripken was. No one's ever accused him of that. Everybody else in baseball was doing but Cal, because Cal would never cheat, right? Um, Tom Brady, to me, at 44 or 45, what point do you start at? Seeing what Roethlisberger looked like, seeing what Peyton Manning looked like, and I know he's taking care of himself and he's eating his avocado and all that. There's some Balco going on here. You, you know what I mean? Like, and I, and he'll be 58 and write about it. And, you know what he was doing to cheat the system. And, and, and by the way, does anybody not pass a piss test anymore? Is there, is there drug testing? There's COVID testing, right? COVID. And now COVID's gone. I haven't heard anybody pee dirty in years in the NFL. That's so a, you know what? that's a great comment. You're right. So, so you, you know, all of a sudden it's, I don't care what Balco you have or who Barry Bonds' cousin you saw or whatever you're doing to play. You're 44. You don't look like Brady Anderson. So you, but this is not natural. You know what I mean? It's just not. I, I, and he's got all the money in the world and all the access in the world and all the privacy and all of that. And now he's got the cut spa that he's a loud mouth and he's doing subway commercials and like stuff that he never did for 20 years. There's a, he's cheating. To play and and I and like I that that's my opinion and it's because I've never ever seen anybody do this past thirty seven or thirty eight and he's pushing forty five and I just think I think he's cheating and I think at some point whatever look we thought we thought cheating involved needles and and syringes and all that and Barry Bonds is getting clear rubs and looks like Popeye all of a sudden because he had enough money to buy designer drugs. How can this guy be doing this at 40? Like, how is it possible? How, how is it? How, how, like, to me, that's something that's a book down the line. But this is, this is subnatural. This is no one will ever. Well, Lamar Jackson will not be running around at 44 playing football. Just won't be. He's cheating father time, right? I, I wear Tom Brady's pajamas, right? These are ceramic uh, 
coated pajamas that uh, use in your own infrared heat to heat your body. He's eating avocado ice cream. He's getting infusions. He's not eating shade plants like tomatoes. I mean, he's taking care of himself. It, it is a pleasure to watch him play at 45. For that reason, he what is he he's not eating tomatoes? What the hell's wrong with what? what? Hold on, I haven't read up on his his oh, diet. Yeah, so yeah, tell yeah. me, I know about avocado ice cream, and I'm healthy. Uh, People come to me and say, how are you 53? When I shave, I look a little younger, and that's cool. But, like, I ain't playing football at 45. It's a different gig here he's doing. Oh, no. Yeah, he's got a whole diet, man. He's he's dialed in with his uh, trainer or whatnot. Uh, they call them shade plants, and, and the tomato is one of those. They don't eat them. Um, uh, there's something in them. I don't know all the, the science behind them, but but Tom really, really is all about Tom. Tom takes care of his body like no one else. He's a spaceman. He's from the future, which is why he's able to play at 45. Uh, a few weeks ago, he said he, he saw himself playing until 50. Now, there's factors that will prohibit him from getting there, but I do believe if he really wants to play until he's 50, if there's one guy that can do it, it's Tom Brady. Well, he could play next year. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we're not, we're, not, we're not making the Ben Roethlisberger argument or the, you know, limping off the field what Peyton Manning did, what Elway did at the end. He's, he's not that guy. No, I mean, except for his busted lip. I mean, he looked fine after the game, right? So he got a little abrasion on his lip, but uh, by all accounts. And the year before, he played on a bum knee. This is Tom Brady we're talking about. It. Bruce Bruce Arians has already said he's coming back. So I do think that Tom comes back for at least one more year, which is, it'll be fun. It'll be fun watching the Buccaneers once again next year, but not to take away from all the other games. And again, I was glad to see the Packers that lose to the 49ers for a number of reasons. That was a, what a great game that was. And Lambeau Field with the bleacher seats and uh, zero degrees uh, uh, temperature. It was how fun was that game? If Aaron Rodgers was working at your dealership, would he be? I mean, you know what I mean. Like, would you have him out shaking hands with without a mask? But like, like I, I, I can't get over the people that buck the system that feel like they have their own set of rules, right? And to your point, that may have been an issue with Wink and, and John. Leadership works that way, but for Cincinnati at this point. They're the story to me. And the Bills, the Bills in Cincinnati playing to go to the Super Bowl would have been delicious. And I'm not anti-Reed or, or, or even Mahomes, who's fantastic, and the games are fantastic. But but Cincinnati, for me, you talk about having a dirty little, like, I kind of rooting for Joe Burrow in some sort of weird way. And I don't, I, ha I harbor no thoughts of love for the Bengals, even when Marvin was there. I didn't root for him. Um, but there's part of it for me that, you know, I want to see them have a good time. Uh, you know, and, and Burrow's been a real pleasure to watch. He he's the real deal, right? He is the real deal. I'm amazed how many of our the Ravens fan base that are salty that the Bengals are in the position that they're in. Look, enjoy it for what it is. Those guys haven't won anything in, in in eons, right? So let them have some fun. He's got a great offense. He seemed like he's a great kid. And you know, I'm not telling you I'll be rooting for him, but I, I, I also can't root for the Chiefs either. So it's one of these things. A lot of these games, Ness, I didn't have a rooting interest. I picked all the home, home teams to win. Of course, I was I would one for three, and that's what that given away points with the spread. Shows you how much I know, but I did really enjoy the quality of the games, and that was highlighted by that that epic uh, Bills Chiefs game. What a, what a wonderful weekend of football. I used uh, a little portion of my Saturday after we moved in and got sort of settled a little bit. My wife had something she had to return down at Rundle Mills Mall. My lottery partners um, have obviously opened up all the sports casino wagering. I said to my wife, let's get in alive in the sniff around a little bit. So we walked around the casino from maybe about 2.30 to about 4. And then we left to, to come back and watch the games. We didn't stay there. Um, that was, you know, it was quite a scene to walk into Las Vegas for that moment and feel it, see it, fans, Steelers gear, 49ers gear, people geared up for, it was quite a, a, a weekend. And I wanted to go down there and witness it for a playoff because it's not going to be like that again, the football, maybe March Madness would be like that. Um, but, but I seeing eight teams that weekend and then to come back and have the games deliver, really deliver for the league, deliver on a cold weekend for everybody in America sitting at home. Um, really about 20 hours of, you know, pretty, pretty good football, pretty interesting coverage before, during and after. And then this weekend, we got Kansas City, Cincinnati, San Francisco and L.A. Dennis will be here on Thursday doing the Dennis Colazzo show. You can find him at D Colazzo show out on the Twitter thing. And of course, on Sunday morning for the rebroadcast as well. You can get predictions. We're going to make our we're going to make our picks Greek. What are we going to do on Thursday? Let's get the intangibles. We'll do it, brother. But you know what? Whatever I pick, you know, take the other team because uh, I went. <laughs> I would look if you were if if you had the home team. The three out of four, the four three out of four home teams lost. Nestor, how does that happen? What what happened to the home field advantage? Right, three out of four home field fan bases went home very unhappy over the weekend. And Kansas City should have gone home unhappy. 
Yep, should have gone. Uh, should have gone four for four, right? So now we have the home teams this week, this weekend, and the Chiefs and the Rams. And what a great job the Rams did, right? Going down to Tampa Bay, jumping on them early, and taking care of business. Unbelievable. Well, there was the comeback. <laughs> It was a comeback, but the outcome was still the Rams' favor. You got to give him credit, man. They just have they just have punched the uh, the Buccaneers. No, when he when he scored the last one, and I they they panned to the Rams' defense, and those guys were like walking off, like like I'm like, oh my god, you got to be kidding me! And then 30 seconds later, boom, Cooper Cup, boom, and Stafford. We haven't said his name. We haven't said his oh. name. We haven't said Matthew or Matt Stafford in this segment, and. There's a guy in Detroit dying all those years, never having a chance, never having a stage. He was beaten on the turf by Tom Brady, and then he makes a play. Makes a play. Cooper Cup, how do you cover him with a safety, uh, with the game on the line? The, the, the best receiver in professional football, and you let him get behind you. How do you do that, Ness? If you're going to double cover one player on that field, it's Cooper Cup. It's not about Odell Beckham Jr. You pick your poison, but you don't let the best player on the field beat you. On the offense, anyway, because on defense they have Aaron Donald and a few other guys that can play. But and so I have a flight uh, two weeks from Sunday um, to LA. Uh, it's going to be the Rams or the 49ers. Could be a home team. Going to be Kansas City or Cincinnati. Week long, uh, out at the convention center. I, I'm assuming everybody's mask all the time, right? So be a good time to get me a Coons up uh, 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 a three ply, right? So for for my mask, right? So. Am I going, do you think, I mean, am I going to go out there for, what, what, what do you, as my sponsor, as my friend, as my partner, 12 hours on Radio Row, five days with a mask in LA, downtown at a convention center with dogs, bomb sniffers, all that stuff going on, is, um, I don't know, is a real, is Snoop Dogg going to come down and hang out on radio? Are we going to have real celebrities? I think so. Of course, it's L.A., baby. You know what? Everybody's going to come out. Everybody loves L.A. You got to go. Well, if the Rams are in for sure, right? Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic time either way. You can't go wrong. It's going to be a fantastic Super Bowl. And if we get any look, let's hope we get the, the quality of games this weekend as we got the past weekend. That would be just fantastic for it's fantastic for the NFL and for us fans. Let me let my wife know. Honey, Dennis says I should go. All right, good. Go, Maybe I should go. Go, go, go. go, go. go. Well, go, nothing go, holds go. me back. 27 Super Bowls. The only thing that's kept me back from the Super Bowl, and you know this, it's a plague. <laughs> right, right. So I missed that on the last year. But uh, Dennis Colazzo should be here on Thursday. He'll be here from 3 until 5. It is the D. Colazzo Show. You can find him out on Twitter. And, of course, what's going on in your dealership? What's what's happening now? I mean, with snow, no snow. Water, no water. Four by, you still have a four-wheel drive for me if I need one, right? I have a whole bunch of four-wheel drives. I have 175 brand-new vehicles in stock, which is, again, a lot more than most uh, in the nation, and over 300 pre-loved vehicles. So we have, we have a lot, man. You, if you need wheels... I know a guy, right? <laughs> Just one phone call away. I was pre-loved at one point. That's why I'm wearing my uh, my red broken heart Valentine's Coons <laughs> here. Here, uh, Coons for our tech service is out there for you. If um they hire Anthony Weaver or fire Greg Roman, I uh, we'll find out this week. Uh, stick around. It looks around all week long. We're talking some football around here. Getting back to onto the political scale, uh, also the arts, and also the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery. I'll be letting myself play at parts. Unknown. Sometime next month, we're going to start it off at Nacho Mama's, where I had a delicious quesadilla the other night. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive. <laughs>